Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm using the new Daisy Bouquet stamp set from Simon's Stamp to create a really colorful and dramatic floral card. I'm going to be using watercolor markers. And before I get into the card, I want to remind you guys that all the supplies, everything I'm using in this video is listed down below in the video description with links to online stores. So it makes shopping super, super easy for any of the supplies that I'm using today. The stamp set I'm using from Simus Stamp is called Daisy Bouquet, and this is included in their Celebrate You release that just came out, and it's one of my favorite stamp sets from the new release. I'm going to be using the large cluster of daisies that has six flowers, all with their stems coming down. It's a nice big image, so it's really great if you want to just have it be the focal point of your card. I'm going to be using some watercolor markers today, and because of that, that's determined what surface I'm working on. I'm going to be using some Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. This paper is fantastic for use with watercolor markers. It was a game changer for me when it comes to zig markers or artesian markers or any watercolor markers work beautifully with this paper. And so whenever I use watercolor markers, I make sure to use Bristol. Stamping that daisy image in Acorn VersaFine Clair ink. This ink is waterproof and it's, it works great with watercolor markers or traditional watercolors or any watercolor medium because it is waterproof. And it's also very detailed. So it's perfect for all these little intricate lines on the daisies. Since I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of watercolor and over this entire surface, I'm making sure to tape down my piece to a hard board. That's going to help it stay flat as it dries and as I paint. I'm using some Zig Clean Color Rilla Brush Markers today. And as I switch colors and paint this, I'm going to have the color names listed in the top corner of the screen. This is just in case you want to use similar colors on a project you are working on so you can find what colors I'm using. So I'm starting out with the color Light Carmine. This is one of my favorite colors from my Zig, my small collection of Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I bought the 48 pack, I think, to begin with, and I haven't ventured out. I know there's more than that. There's many more than that, but I have a really good experience with just the 48, so I don't feel the need to buy more. So I'm gonna paint two of these flowers starting out with this Light Carmine color, and even though both flowers start out with the same color, they will end up with different finished looks. And that's by adding additional colors on top. Each one of these flowers is going to have the same method of painting, which is putting down a lighter shade of color and then letting that dry and then coming back in with a couple darker shades. So now I'm using wine red and I'm adding the color to the, to the interior pieces of the petals nearest the center of that flower and also um, when the flower petals are stacked I want to make sure that they're shading for that petal underneath. The thing that's really cool about using watercolor markers like this and on Bristol paper is that the color really spreads and you can add a little tiny bit of color to a petal and then use a wet brush to spread that out. It's a really cool watercolor look and it's a great way and really fast way to use colors like this. All right, so both of those flowers had the same light carmine shade underneath, but then I put wine red on the flower at the bottom and purple on the flower at the top, and you can see how that really changes the color. So now I'm going to use wine red on this flower right here. I'm gonna make sure I add the most concentrated color at the center of the flower, and then spread that out with my wet paintbrush. By the way, I'm using a size four paintbrush from, uh, let's see, this is from Royal and Langnickel. It's there. Uh, Zen line. It's a really nice sized brush for images of this size. So I've used yellow and I've also used orange. And I also wanted to mention that some of the color combinations I'm using on these flowers is greatly inspired by Kathy Rakuzen. She has a coloring challenge, a 30 day coloring challenge on her Instagram and blog uh, multiple times throughout the year. 
and I love her coloring. I'm good friends with Kathy. I love her to death. And I, what I love about her coloring is she has the most unique and bright mix of colors. She's not shy about mixing colors and in really unexpected ways. And so adding this blue on top of the wine red, it turns it a little bit purple. Um, I thought that would be an unexpected color combination, and that was inspired by Kathy. So I'm putting some of that. I think this is a carmine red on top of that orange. And then I'm coming in with brown on the yellow daisy, just adding color down into the, to the shaded areas. And for this flower at the very bottom, I'm actually going to do the same color combination as the red and purple flower in the center. I think if I was to redo this card again or paint it again, I would have the very first flower I painted, the one in the bottom center, I would have that be yellow. Just so I'd have like two points of yellow and then um, two points of the purple blue and then a pink flower, a couple pink flowers. I think that would be a nice combination of colors. But even though I didn't have a second yellow flower, I really do like that yellow flower. I think it's gorgeous and it's a great color combination if you wanna have yellow daisies on your card. All right, so I'm adding more of this dark brown into all these areas. I ended up using dark brown on all of the flowers as their darkest shading color. And that really made it more cohesive. And it also kind of is a nod back to the stamping ink color that I used for the actual stamp, that um, acorn ink color from Versafine Claire. It's going to bring that brown intensity back to all of these flowers. So I'm continuing painting and I'm adding more of that purple blue shade. I really like that flower that's kind of tipped to the side. I think it looks really cool. All right, up here at on that pink purple flower at the very top, like I said, I'm using that same dark brown shade for all of the shading on these flowers. So when you're using Bristol paper, it does absorb water and it can handle quite a bit of moisture, but you don't want to sit and manipulate the paper like a ton like you are able to with traditional watercolor paper. That's because this Bristol paper, well formulated and made to work with more wet media, um, it's not like watercolor paper where you can add tons and tons of layers of water without it breaking down. So as you're painting with your watercolor markers, just be sure to kind of move around your painting. Um, let some areas dry before going back and adding more layers of color. For the centers of the flowers, um, I decided to do kind of a green shade. I'm painting these daisies more like they are Gerbera daisies, um, which are very colorful. However, the daisies that um, I referenced when I was designing the stamp set are actually more of your traditional, just white daisies with the yellow center. So I'm taking some liberties by coloring these in some really colorful um, shades. Um, so it's not really accurate to nature, but let's be real now. It's an illustration, it's not really accurate anyway. So for a really dramatic background, and because I was thinking of how I was going to put that greeting over the top in white embossing powder, um, I decided to do a black background. Now the black marker in the Zig Color, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker um, set, this black, actually it looks really black when you first put it down, but as it kind of fades out and dries, it has a purple tone to it. So even though I painted this with black, it does kind of look a little bit purple on the final card. And I'm totally okay with that because I did use shades of purple in the flowers. So it worked out really well. I decided that I needed a little more dimension on the centers of the flowers. They didn't have enough dark. So I came in with that dark brown again and just darkened up those areas, made them look a little bit more dimensional and have it fit in with the rest of the image. So I hit that with my heat tool just to speed up the drying process. And then I peeled off my painter's tape that was holding my project to my hardboard. So now I'm going to do all the stamping with, with that greeting that I was telling you about, the really large Love You More Each Day greeting. I'm going to prep the area with an anti-static powder tool. I'm gonna to be doing some heat embossing, so I wanna make sure I have a really good um, experience with that heat embossing powder. I don't want it to go everywhere where it's not wanted. So I'm making sure to add that anti-static powder tool. Just puts a little coating of powder over the image. I'm stamping the greeting in Versamark ink. It's a nice sticky ink. It's perfect for embossing powder. 
And after I have that stamped down, I sprinkled on some white embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. The color name is Alabaster. And I'll tap off the excess and then use my heat tool to heat set it until all of that white embossing powder is smooth and melted. That's gonna make it permanent and have it stay on the card. So I decided I wanted some white splatters just kind of all over the flowers, make it look a little bit more magical, um, maybe like little specks of dust in the, in the air. I think that would look kind of cool. So I took some white gouache and I diluted it with a little bit of water and then with my brush, kind of run it off the edge of this acrylic block so that it splatters onto my card. And there, were, there weren't quite enough large splatters, so I did use my paintbrush and just add some in in different areas. Used my heat tool to speed along the drying process. And then I'm going to use um, some new dies from the release. This is the rounded corner rectangle die set. And I'm gonna use the largest rectangle. I'm gonna hold that in place with some micro pour tape while I run it through my die cutting machine. And because I did just paint all that gouache and all that watercolor marker, just to make sure no color transfers to any of my cutting plates in my uh, die cutting machine, I just put down a piece of scratch paper just to catch any of that paint in case it transfers. So after I finished die cutting, I have this right here and it's all cut out. Now this um, set of rectangles is really interesting. It's not the perfect dimensions for a regular A2 card. Um, when you use the largest rectangle, it's actually four by five. So I'm going to make a slightly odd sized card today. It's going to be five by six. So I'm cutting some blue violet cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I don't think I've ever used this cardstock color and it's gorgeous. I don't know why I've never used it. So I'm scoring that at five, five inches so that the finished folded card size is five by six. And then I adhered my watercolor piece using some foam tape. And that pretty much finishes the card for today. Hope you enjoyed this watercolor piece with watercolor markers. Um, I really love the dramatic colors behind those words. I think it looks really, really cool. Just a reminder, you can catch all of the supplies I use today down in the video description. And this is also part of a block up for Simon's latest release. So if you wanna hop along and see more examples from the release, click on my blog post link down below. On screen, I've got some more card examples using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So I hope you'll catch those. And thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my blog. And I appreciate you all so, so much. I will catch you in another video very soon.